Welcome to Creator's Corner, where we share some of the music, art, movies, and web-related stuff that's inspiring us, and a little bit of stuff that we're making ourselves. So that little piece there at the beginning was a duet from a guy named uh, Julius Eichberg, and that's Edelweiss, not to be confused with the Edelweiss from The Sound of Music. One of my students uh, is playing that, and I was like, ah, that's not a little bad, bad little duet. Sounds like it could be a good uh, soundtrack. Yeah, actually, you know what it makes me think of? It makes me think of... Uh, and Firefly when they're at that dance mm -hmm. when uh, Kaylee has the hoop has skirt. The, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the cupcake. She's dressed like a cupcake. It's also my birthday this week, so Melissa got me this. Neuromancer by William Gibson. I'm starting over in sci-fi. I've got a whole list of sci-fi for us. Right now I'm reading a Bradbury story. I'm trying to divvy up my reading. Read 50% nonfiction, 50% fiction. Better go start reading now. So I can move on to this. Woo! Let's do this. Yay, more books in our life. Frant for you, so it's not a Ford rant. A this Morant. is a Morant. Costs less than the digital copy. That's what makes me mad. And, you know, like, yeah, I understand, like, mass market paperbacks, right? Okay, that makes sense. Like, you're printing large volumes, therefore you can print them cheaply. But do not tell me that a digital copy of a book is more expensive than a mass market paperback. The Morant. <laughs> Why do some Kindle books... My unhappiness, right. ...more Why? expensive when they're digital copies? Every Kindle book is more expensive than the mass, than the paperback. That version. have no overhead. It's the same problem I had with CDs because mechanically CDs are less expensive than tapes, but they were yeah. more expensive. Yeah. Like, that's one of those right? things that's like... There's less materials going into putting that in the consumer's hand. Is that really capitalism? Really? Like, is that really the market dictating the price? Really? Or is there something else going in here? Like, I, I feel like only cartels can make something that is cheaper to manufacture more expensive. Kindle books were always cheaper, right. which was great because we were living halfway around the world. I didn't want to... Haul all these books, yeah. books back and forth across nations. So ebooks was definitely the correct choice for our life. And now I just want to be able to take it wherever I go because you always have your phone on you. Who doesn't in this day and age always have their smartphone on them? Everybody has it, so you can always have a book wherever you are. Dance with Dragons. Do you really want to have to haul something this large or, around? Yeah, with you're you? reading the Stormlight Archives, so you have to. Have, like, uh, yeah, exactly. A library. I love my digital copies of Brandon Sanderson. I don't want to have to carry around this. Huge Sanderson book everywhere. Anyway, so there's, there's that for you. The Morant. <laughs> oh, that's new. So we started off with me on this side of the pond playing some classical music. And then another one from Anubhav, Mishra. So I thought I'd share this with you. Some more Chopin. This time he doesn't have a cast on his hand, so he's a little more mobile. So check it out.
would say, hey, let's use them. But they're a little bit sad sounding. I don't want... <laughs> I, Chopin, to me, like, there's so much of his stuff. I mean, he has a raindrop prelude, but I feel like there's so much that Chopin makes me think of rain. It's just... It's just hmm. like... Yeah, I can see that. I like how he did the um, the filmy... Yeah, that filmy was really fitting. Overlay. Yeah, it was really nice. So keep them coming on above. I, yeah. I love it. It's love great. it. Uh, for art this week, I got this one. Uh, so this is one of these Twitter accounts. This one's Wilhelm Gustloff Fitting, called After the Rain. And I just realized right nice. now that's supposed to be clouds back there. I actually thought that that was like a giant like cliff. Like a huge, yeah, it does. 1879 nice. by a dude named Kunzi. So I know absolutely nothing about that. But I'm going to go ahead and change my background to this. So if you've got any music recommendation, art recommendations, or books that you're reading that you would recommend, let us know in the comments. Uh, so this week on the Building of Better Me stream, we uh, got to do some reminiscing. So this is me and Kara, my, basically like we're almost family. Uh, we would travel over to Tallahassee and play in the Tallahassee Youth Symphony Orchestra or Tallahassee Symphony Youth, or I can never remember which way it went. But anyways, we would use, uh, it was at Florida State University in their music school. And uh, so we had many adventures trying to learn to create music, uh, or at least to play it. Perform it. Perform it, yes. And then he and Kara were in a trio together as That's well. Right. So was, was this around the same time? Yeah, I think so. I, I was Perfect in and Harmony. There. Perfect Harmony was the name of our trio. So Kara is a regular on our Twitch stream. Uh, which we've been doing Sunday mornings. Uh, speaking of which, do submit some links in the Creators Corner subreddit. Stuff that is CC inspiring sub. you, whether it's stuff that you're working on, stuff that other people have done. A couple weeks ago, Sonny submitted uh, a couple pieces of music he's working on, and we got to collab a little bit on that. Um, this was some of the stuff inspiring uh, some of our viewers and stuff that they're working on this week. Cool little thing from Improbable One. So, okay, it turns out, he said, Quick little journey in Pick's art. Happy birthday, Ford. So he said this one was of a surfer. Oh, okay. I can see the water. So apparently this was me. I didn't realize it when I looked at it. Oh, okay, so he has a little... Oh! Who <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Who would have guessed? Ford, you just look so artistic while surfing. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. That was fun. All right, so we got another one here. May sound strange. Oh! It's Smed. Smed! <laughs> hey! We, uh, he went to our college. College, yeah. May sound strange, but trees inspire me to be quote-unquote creative. I don't know what the quote-unquote's there for, Christian. I'm pretty sure you're pretty creative, dude. <laughs> Those we... are some cool trees, though. Just look at the patterns right? of that, the... Yeah, those are awesome. There you go. I didn't even read didn't that, even, that Denise yeah. said that. She said the exact same thing. Those are awesome. Yeah, it's funny. Like, you can look at something. If you're not paying attention, you, you just wouldn't... Look at the patterns yeah, but look in, at the, it, in the mm -hmm. limbs. Yeah. And the... Normally, I'd just walk right by this and not paying attention. Mm -hmm. But because of the angle that he shot it at, you can kind of see how some Super of this... cool. It let's, almost looks like a root look system. look at the other ones. All right. Mm. It's pretty nice. Mm hmm Nice. Mm hmm Whoa. That's like some uh, Guillermo del Toro yes. stuff right there. Um, your Creators Corner videos are great. Not sure if this is helpful or as far as creativity goes, I'm inspired by trees. I could write a lot about all the various ways that they're a brilliant example of creativity, problem solving, adaptability, beauty, resourceful, connected, etc. Woodworking also then brings an entire element of appreciation towards Dude, them. Dude, write it. Yes. Write it and share it. Christian. Yeah, that would be really cool. Write it and share it. Yeah, because you think about... Um, one of the things I like so much about video games is that they are this... We. Me and Judah talked about this in the Reverse Redaction podcast. Uh, traditional art forms are very linear. Uh, they're very dictatorial in terms of author. Uh, you know, the author has control of most of the meaning, and it's delivered in a linear fashion. The interface is very one-to-one. -one. Um, whereas with a video game, there is all this possibility. The the audience is part author that you know it's almost like a choose your own adventure you know when you read a choose your own adventure you're part author when you look at like works of art in nature that's like another level like that you're talking about 
mechanical selection. The tree is going to be following the light to a certain degree, but what if there's shade that day? Uh, you know, so there's, I don't know, there's all kinds of cool thoughts about, it's an interesting thought experiment, thinking about trees as a work of art. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's really good. So thanks for the submission there. All right, last one in the Creators Corner subreddit here from Deli Melly, the one and only. I know I've talked about it before, but I cannot. Just, I can't stop saying how much I love Chef's Table. So all the food shows today have a host. Our show doesn't have a host. People keep telling me it needed to be a unified host, but I believe that the chefs could tell their own story. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do really like how each episode about the chefs really does tell uh, their own story. Not a food show. It's really a show about people. That, you know, he made the comparison to uh, Geo Dreams of Sushi, which I've oh, never which seen. Oh, which he, so Giro he, that he made that. He oh. came up with the idea of, for I Chef's Table before that, but he made that, and then that was, that gave him the entry See, that to makes make sense. Chef's Table. No one, I mean, until you watch one of these, the very first episode of season one, you watch it like, this is a movie. It's one of these things that where the guy watching the show is like, yep, that's me. And the people watching it will be like, yep, that's him. Yeah. You don't make better documentaries yeah. than that, that show people's faults and people are willing to let their faults be shown mm -hmm. to everyone. And documentaries have really been, by and large, propaganda pieces for a thing or usually against a thing. Saying, oh, look how bad McDonald's is. Oh, look how bad Billy Mitchell is. Mm -hmm. Like You never come away from that show thinking that person's the best person I've ever met. But you do come away from that show saying, man, I could learn something about that person even though I disagree with his, you know, yeah. philosophy or whatever. It's, it's fantastic. So I, I watched, um, I'm in season three, so I watched the um, Ivan Orkin episode, which I actually will share on Building a Better Me. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you Wednesday. Uh, you can tune in on Twitch a couple times this week. I will be streaming some League of Legends in the evenings after I upload. He's so. back. I'm back. Back in the rift. I'm back on the rift. Losing like crazy. I'm going to be the highest ranked old man on earth. Okay, so who is who so far is, is older than you and ranked higher above you right now? I don't know. I need to do some you research You need to make a list. I need to make a list. So we can keep track. I can keep track. And you can like move up move up everyone move else is up. shooting for like a, a a like gold or plat or master or challenger like these are the different gradations of how good you are at this game no i'm shooting for am i better than anyone my age i think it's a good goal that's a realistic goal. that's a realistic goal <laughs> you don't stream for 18 hours a day yeah exactly so <laughs> you know there's this thing called responsibility right yeah literally People stream for 12 to 16 hours a day. They play this game nonstop. But they also hours. aren't married and don't have children. So, or right? if they are in a relationship, this is their job. I mean, yeah. they're making $5,000 a day playing a video game. So there you go. Exactly. So, yeah. All right. Well, see ya.